Calling parts and rec meeting to order. We want to thank the first division. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Let's go to history roll call. Clark? Here. Corbino? Here. Ermeline? Here. East here. Here. Wyland? Approval of minutes from previous meeting, August 26, 2024. Uh, motion by Easter. A second. Uh, second by Clark. Any more discussion? Do you want to wait until the agenda item Please. Okay, comes up? Okay. Any other public comment? Online? Okay. Now we'll go to number six, playground educational presentation and reports, playground update. So I just want to give you all an update on seven new, seven new playgrounds. Um, as far as the installation, the curbing, the engineered wood fiber, and then finally the topsoil and seeding of the grass areas around them has been completed. Um, we're waiting to see if, I mean, the village board did approve the Mock Miller Park improvements of the curbing and the engineered wood fiber. Um, but as of right now, the playgrounds are installed, they're all being used. Um, we've seen a, definitely an increase in traffic just due to the new playgrounds, um, just you know, based on the use of your parks, et cetera. So, if you have any questions regarding the, the playground update, I would entertain those right now. Um, what are we doing about the scratches on, on the post that So, we documented those scratches, um, and you did. Approached me last Monday, you know, right before the meeting, and showed me a, a picture of those scratches. So we have documented those and we'll be contacting the manufacturer as far as moving forward with that. Jim? Jim, that's still 502 Arrow Street. Um, have all the playground equipment pieces been paid for? Or have any of them been paid for? I understand it's both comments. You don't have to answer that. But cool to talk to the board. Um, because I, I look at those scratches, and to me, it looks like just severe neglect and mishandling of hundreds of thousands of dollars of playground equipment. Just three quarters of a million dollars of playground equipment. Each piece, let's just say the swing set is a hundred thousand dollars. If this were a hundred thousand dollar car, and that scratch is on that car, would you take delivery of it? Absolutely not. You tell the dealer, no way. You find me a car that doesn't have a scratch under. So I don't know whether they got the image in transit or whether they got the image handling it, installing it, whether it's sitting on the site and was vandalized, I don't know. Um, but that's not acceptable. I would not write a check for $775,000 for that equipment. That's unacceptable. It's not responsible utilization of taxpayer dollars. Thank you. Have you had any feedback? I mean, or what? Have you seen the scratches at all? I don't know. I was going to just pull up I, uh, some pictures. You got some pictures? Mm -hmm. um, also, the Jamie, I, that would take some pictures, a few of those. I don't know that such a painful early supply. The results of rusting, right? <coughs> I, don't, I don't know what. What they can do about it? Will they replace it? I mean, are there any? Has there been any discussion? 
I think the next step is sending it to its game time, correct? Uh, yes. Sending it to game time and just making them aware and, and seeing what best next steps are. Um, I think when park staff was out there, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, the nothing is structurally unsound or incorrect with the equipment. So it would be addressing with the game time, how, what are their thoughts if this has happened before, how has it been handled? So. Looks like a paint chip at Kennedy right there. I don't know what piece of equipment that is. So it's on the climbing feature of the netting structure. Mm -hmm. um, and anything that we caught during the installations, the installers took care of right away. So we had an issue with the steering wheel at Yellow Banks. We also had some missing bolts at Kelly Land mm -hmm. that we caught as they were doing the installation and they took care of right away. Of course, the installers, a separate company from the consultant that sold us the playgrounds, and then you also have the manufacturer of the playgrounds too. So, like you said, it could be the could be the installers, it could be in transit. Um, and that's one of those things where you know it's gonna be, you know, where we have to try to nail down those details. And have game time been contacted yet? They have not. And when will you be doing that? We can do it as quickly as possible tomorrow. Okay. Great. Um, and then the door for the library books that has been repaired, replaced. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. Staff, we did it on Friday. And um, if there are garbage cans there, why are, why do we have portable garbage cans? What is the purpose? So the, the carts are what goes out to the street every week that gets under emptied by waste management. So the small cans get dumped in the carts, and then the carts are taken to the street where waste management picks them up. Okay. Do you are there usually garbage bags in in the stationary? Garbage cans? In some of them. It all depends. Like the actual garbage one. Um, not necessarily. Are you talking like underneath the shelter or? No, no, the stone ones on the outside. The, oh, the recycle bins? Well, you took pictures of those are recycle bins. Well, there's I, no bags in those typically. I believe one said garbage. It oh, should be it should be metal, glass, and plastic. Oh. It's the ones with the blue covers that you took a picture of? Yeah. Yeah, those are recycled. And those don't garbage bags? No. Okay. No. And just just to say this, but the fact that you took those pictures mm -hmm. with the lids being off, right. I was there on Monday, and I put two of them back on, and they were back off by the time you were there. Okay. So it's, it's an ongoing thing. Mm -hmm. We have people that come and clean out the recycle bins for aluminum can recycling, et cetera. Um, and just so happens that most of the time, what's in the recycle bins is garbage. Okay. <laughs> Why I'm asking, all of it is garbage. There is no Yeah, and I mean, we've known that um, when we started the current contract with waste management, we had recycling carts, just like you have at home, and garbage carts. And they're like, recycling doesn't work. As soon as you get a piece of garbage in there, that whole cart is contaminated. So just they'd rather because they'd rather they'd rather see all the recyclables in the garbage than contaminating the recyclables. It was so, a little bit of an eyesore, and that's why I took a picture of it. So maybe we should consider just removing it. I think it lowers the risk of it, then we should get at least another cart there because those carts that we put out by the curb every week are full all the time. So we even haul garbage away from there when we do garbage rounds on Monday and Fridays, and especially if you have a party there. And like this weekend, we're going to have one Saturday and Sunday rental there. Saturday might fill up both cans, so then I'm probably going to have to put out extra garbage cans out there for the rental on Sunday. So if you take those away, especially, we're going to have to probably get some more carts there. <clears throat> no, I don't think it needs to put up the same thing. <clears throat> you know, it would be nice if they did, but you know, just throwing garbage. Or we could just get a dumpster that 
Right? Don't the and cards and the that's cards what those cards are yeah. too. But as soon as you throw one piece of garbage in there, the whole the whole bin of recyclables is contaminated, and they can't use it, so it gets dumped immediately in the garbage. Then. You throw one food wrapper in there, and it's the whole the whole bin. I don't even think if you got a bigger recyclable, like you're talking about, that 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 they won't put garbage in there to contaminate it. I'm just trying to think what right. would be easier. I think mean, honestly, if you want to take yeah. away the cart or the recyclables, I would get another cart or two there, okay. just for garbage, and then it felt. And you don't have to deal with the covers being. Like... It's just kind of it's like it looks neglected. Okay, moving on. Oh, and then you'll just email. Can you um, give us feedback on what Tane Tang says? Yep. Number seven discussion. I'm not going to argue. So this item was referred back to the board. Um, there was a question on if this was actually recommended for approval and at the committee level. Uh, so I did include the entire item eight from the August meeting along with the action that was taken by the committee. Uh, so we did have a four to one vote on uh, recommending approval of the improvements at Machina. Which would be the curbing and the installation of the engineered wood fiber. Clark, I believe you wanted to see pictures of curbing the shoes. Oh, yeah, please. Hold on, I can make them a little smaller. So, included pictures of the ties. Um, the first one is there's actually a piece of rebar sticking out. Um, and then Second picture is the misaligned ties just due to movement. Also, missing ties, as you notice in the corner. Um, next picture is a picture of missing ties on the west side of it, also. Uh, and then I did a pictures where you could see the entire sand play area around the play structure and also around the swing sets. Um, so, because these two areas are separated so far, it's actually two quite large areas compared to how the new ones are incorporating into one space. What happened to the missing ties? <laughs> I think they just got so twisted and that over the years we probably didn't call them out of them. And then I also included a copy of the playground recommendations or as far as fall zones, heights. Um, the current sand is good for a four foot high deck deck height, um, which we exceed that at this point. So the sand is actually not an approved um, fall zone for the deck heights that we currently have. So like you said, this motion has already been approved. I guess I just wanted to come back and make sure um, after some of the pictures that we have. Yeah. We would be removing the sand then and putting the, in the wood fiber. Yep. 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 We get calls on the sand. People, you know, they're, when their children get all full of sand, they, it's gross. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. They might think you be playing. This is worse, but right. So we really don't need action on it. It was, has already been approved by the board, but just want to make sure that everybody's seen oh, pictures that. Yeah. and then um, that the recommendation was to move forward with last yeah. meeting. Okay, moving on. Number nine. Oops. 
right. Number eight, discussion and possible action, modular and part of the law. So Trustee Sagami contacted us about the pickleball courts. Um, he had had some discussions with some of the other pickleball members in the area, and they had some concerns with the location of Mock Miller Park um, as far as access to it, like ease of access. And I don't think it's specifically to the local players, but for tournaments, like it's not the most accessible site, not close to the highway. Um, and just contacted me about, um, you know, the possibility of would Prohaska Park be a location for it? Is that a possibility of, you know, moving that site? So this um, preliminary site layout was provided by Ike, our staff engineer, and um, just as far as square footage layout, et cetera, and if it would be a possibility. We know that we just did a master plan on Prohaska. There was not proposed to be pickleball courts there. Um, and then, you know, we didn't accommodate for, you know, up to 150 vehicles for a tournament, which, you know, you're looking at, you know, three, four tournaments a year. Um, but as far as local players, you know, yes, it can be busy each week. And, you know, Shang and I talked um, how, how quickly Marathon Park parking lot fills up on a, a usage for usage. Um, but just wondering if, you know, with possibility to look at a different site for the course. I guess if, if the infrastructure was already at Prohaska, I would be more gung ho for it. But the lack of, I mean, there is nothing out there at this point. So if you want to develop this at any point in the near future, like Mach Miller seems to be the obvious choice and I get that it's off the highway, but I don't think it's off the highway in such a situation that people coming in from a tournament couldn't get there. Like, I mean, I've been to lots of off the beaten path places for soccer tournaments and things like that, that if you give the people, the participants an adequate map, you, you know, they can make it there. Um, and whether, I mean, there's a lot of different ways to get there even um, coming off of uh, 29 and, and Camp Phillips. So I guess I, my initial thought is Mach Miller is a better, is still a better option. And that was part of the discussion initially was that we already have a large parking lot there, which helps accommodate, you know, for, for this use. Um, and, you know, like you said, they, he had heard some concerns about the proximity to the highway, just ease of access, um, getting to it for a tournament. So, um, just want to make sure we also have the right site. You know, yeah. I also mentioned that, um, to Hushang only, that we also own the Grand Meadows Driving Range. Which is currently a nice flat grass sure. area. Um, it's 14.63 acres. I'm pretty sure it was originally intended for recreation, but now it's probably intended for business park use. Um, the barb shaking her head. Yes. Um, but, you know, as far as just making sure you have the right site and, you know, with the wooded areas at Oscar, it also helps with the wind, the noise. Um, so, just if it's something that you would want to take a look at. I mean, of course, Costa's master plan is a concept plan. We know it would normally probably change before actual installation of anything, sure. um, but just something to look at. No, I, I really like the idea of having it out at, at Mock Miller, and it, it, it gives that park more use. It expands its use, and kind of the age range, I think, of the people using it, and besides that, you can, I mean, the entire family could be out there at the same time using the equipment that we already have. You know, like it's a whole family deal. I, I really like adding that to that particular park. I get that it's a little off the beaten path, but I think that's 
that's overcome with the fact that people want to play this game so much. They'll find <laughs> they'll find their way to the courts. Well, there's a bunch of them that we had at TX or something. Yeah. Well, Antigo, city of Antigo, they just put 16 courts in there. And by looking at that, and location wise, and Nelson there, that was one issue because everybody look at that special people from Boston. And then I had discussion with quite a few people out there asking, what do you think about the location or what do you think about the Is it helpful to look at different locations? And majority of them agree it's better to look at different locations. And I thought Macmillan Park because we want to develop that park. And also, what I think we should put the default put there is going to be a 50 foot parking at that location. And if we add 10 more to it, that should be sufficient for majority of the time, except the tournament time. Because when you have 16 court, you got 64 people playing for a round. So that even 54 should be sufficient because sometimes you don't get 100% people there. And uh, location wise, I think is very convenient. Because you get the Highway 29 campus, that's the map. If you want to give a direction from uh, 29 to Mike Miller Park, I think it's a little bit more involved than that. And also, Prohaska Park is closer to the restaurant, hotel, gas station, and other places in the village. Is close to the center of the village. Not really, it's right at the edge of the village. So, um, and I'll look at the other side, which uh, uh, Sean suggested, which is a green meadow. It is too flat, and also, anytime you get a heavy rain, that area gets flooded. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's too open, also, it's too windy. So there is some setback with that site. And the way the Machinal Park is laid out, it is location you can put that and I was part of that. So I don't know if you have that uh, last step one handy to bring it up. I don't have it. <clears throat> it, it wasn't in the packet because you and I first talked again on Friday in the packet. I, on, I know you have it. I could get access to it. To Prohaska Master Plan? Yeah. Okay, one second. You know where it is? Uh, in a, I think so. <laughs> you probably have it somewhere, but I also have it somewhere. Can we go ahead? All the way through the maps. I just had yes. a couple of comments or questions. I couldn't tell by looking at the, the schematic here if everything in green is concrete, or like, is that entire? 60 by 124 or whatever that the whole big green rectangle rectangles with the walkway in between the playing surface pickleball concrete or lead or grass or will you put pickleball on? I don't know. Um I, I don't pickleball. I don't think I'm about 50 years too young for that, I think. But um someday I'm gonna get there. I still don't know about pickleball, but I'll get that way. Um but and then and this is like a new shelter to be built or this is an existing shelter. The the idea with Rapaska, yeah, makes sense, but there's nothing there. Right. Grass and trees, and there's not even a real parking lot, it's dirt. So, if we're going to put this in for Haska, what does that look like as far as when we're going to develop for Haska? Because nobody's going to come, whether it's one tournament or one one court or all 16 courts being used, nobody's going to come and play this thing as much and put books. Like, this isn't going to happen. You're going to need bathrooms, you're going to need power, you're going to need water, you're going to need all that other jazz in order to make this work. Um, and so, this isn't just if we move it to for Haska, the the dollars for what's on that page, but this is dollars that have sewer and water and power and lights and parking lot and, and everything else. And if we're going to have the whole family there, we're actually going to want to marry around or something else to get to do. Like this is physically a park. We don't necessarily have a park, in my opinion, but just pickleball courts. So that's where I think if, if this is 
the short term, like within the next five years plan, yeah, I'm actually probably a better fit. I don't think Green Metals is a good fit. Um, we displace that business and that asset that we have for the community, where are they going to go? Okay. So, I mean, we agreed to a strategic plan for Prohaska Park. And at the same time, we also agreed to, uh, we're committed to doing some pickleball clubs. It, it seems to me that the development of, or the change in development for Prohaska Park to take on this, this new piece of strategic plan is a little bit too high bar set, high bar set. And I think that the putting the pickleball courts at Mock Mueller is is can is convenient enough, like she said that you, know, you drive to weird places for hockey and rock climbing tournaments and stuff. So I, I think that the original plan of, of keeping it at Mock Mueller is, is the best way to play. I think that, that that seems to be the most realized vision. I, I wouldn't want to re-explore altering Prohaska Park at this, at, at its origin point. Right. Right. You're not really changing anything in there. You're keeping everything the same thing as it is, except on the north side of it, that curvature there, that's the parking, plus the bathroom facility, which is proposed to go in there. And then next to it, it is an open area. There is nothing in there flat. And the other thing is, if you start this, you're starting developing this part. And I agree with you, there is nothing in there. But someplace, sometime you have to start. It. That could be the starting point. Because you already have a parking in there showing it. There's a bathroom facility in there, supposed to go in there. And next to it, to the north side of that area, you can't add the pickup or court without changing anything in that part, in the master. So, can, so can Jamie, do you understand where he's talking? And so it's, like it's, it's just okay. south of the number eight on the north service road, right there. Can we talk about campgrounds? Yeah, it would be yeah. camp camping area would be uh, off the place? off the south. Number eight, which is number two. So just south of the 15 on um, that well, master plan. Campers, I mean, I can see I can't do that on the plot, actually. But, like, wait until the semi start pulling through. <laughs> With Jake breaks. I don't know. I, in my opinion, I thought we were going to save Prohaska and develop it more on the nature and the bit with the fishing piers and the camping um, and possibly the salt stuff. I would like to stick with the original plan. I feel like well and the thing is if you want these football courts anytime soon. That means we're going to have to invest an awful lot of money to get that going now, and we don't have it. You can only borrow so much. Even with the parks that we have now and getting them up and, you know, uh, I just. So there's no motion on the floor for that is just. So this is mostly an update. Um, so some items were brought up at a uh, recent meeting as far as the um, Yellow Ranks Park disc golf course and the lack of maintenance, etc. Items that are missing. Um, just, just the course in general. Um, and also the restrooms that are located within the new well house seven and eight. Um, so as of today, the restrooms are open. Hey. Wow. Hey. Hallelujah. Uh, so we're. Quit having come to the house, right? <laughs> we 
can get rid of the porta potty. That so the porta potty. So the porta potty can be removed. Um, so we did get the locks ordered last week, as Jamie knew, because we kept in contact. Um, we got them ordered. Got, they arrived on Friday, um, and they completed installation this today. Um, so the restrooms are open and ready for use. Um, clean, stock, etc. Uh, and as far as work out of this course itself, um, Cross Area Disc Golf has held some work days out there. Um, and as we've known from the beginning, this was a partnership. That site was not originally supposed to be a disc golf course. It was supposed to be, it was purchased by the utility for a well location. Um, but when the Mock Mueller course due to um, neighborhood issues was abruptly removed, um, we were looking for an alternate site for a course. Um, and the village already owned the property. Well, the utility owned the property. Um, and we had our course designer look at it um, and figured we could put the course in. We knew the site was a challenge, but it's a bigger challenge just mostly because thorny brush, wetlands, the uh, two um, gas pipelines, um, just accessing it in general. Um, so you have Ton of fairways that you can't mow, everything's got to be maintained by hand. Horny brush just keeps coming back, it doesn't disappear. Um, you know, we have a ton of dead trees, Katrina drives by it probably tons of times per day. That's why her she 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 volunteered her time and her family's time to help us maintain the course because it is such a challenging site. Um, and that was one of the things that we talked with Wasser Disc Golf last year. Um, and just get a wetland delineation. So we know areas, if there's areas that we can say fill, seed, help maintain the course, you know, because right now it's such a challenge. Literally the course goes into disrepair, spend a couple of days down there, get it back up and going. A few, several weeks later, you're back at the same point. You're back trying to get it back up to a usable, usable site. Um, and it is not a beginner's disc golf course, by no means. Like if you want to play a beginner course, you would go to Horseman, the Tech, one of the courses that's easy to play. This one has challenges. Um, the course designer definitely has um, his own ideas on how the course should be played. Um, you know, what trees should be removed, what brush should stay, what's out of bounds, what's inbounds. Um, and, but it is difficult for anybody new to the course to actually play it because there is not a lot of direction. Um, the signs are in disrepair and ultimately it is a village course. So the village needs to maintain those items. We, um, did get a proposal from us there just golf last year. Um, they wanted to provide signage because they have connections to all that. But like I said, ultimately it is a village village asset and the village needs to maintain it. So um, we have been down there and the tree on hole five, which was documented in the picture and looked like it had been down a long time. It was new to them. That's actually tree on hole eight that we took care of last week. Um, they were suggesting that we remove the basket, cut the tree down. We're actually able to do it without removing the basket and got the tree out of there. Um, but it, the other part is just accessing, accessing it with equipment. So technically anytime, and Katrina probably knows this, you have to work with Trans Canada um, or TC Energy if you're gonna cross the pipeline with equipment. Our only access to the whole lower portion is by going over the pipeline, one of them, or crossing them both, and if we're going east or west. So they need to know footprint, weight, and what you're crossing with. And they may have to be on site for all your work and what you're utilizing down there, which we know this. We've done other 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 projects where we had to work around it. Michael's probably done way more than me. I've done one in the conservancy. I've done the disc golf one. Um, Yellow Banks on the north side of the river also has that also restriction where anytime you cross that you know pipeline, if it's with a piece of equipment that is not documented you need to contact them. They may want to be on site for it. And then they stay there the whole time you're working to make sure 
that you don't damage it because you're talking six to 800 PSI gas pipeline that's 30 to 40 inches underground. So, yeah. It's not deep. Yeah. It's, it's no, deep. It's, sha it's shallow. And, you know, as the property was built up by somebody that's sitting next to me, uh, they had to mound up over the top of it to cross it with rock trucks, dump trucks, et cetera. And that's a requirement based on the footprint, the weight of each piece of equipment. So when we did the project in the conservancy, we actually only utilized one piece of equipment because they wouldn't approve some of the other stuff we would cross with. So we literally did the whole project with the bulldozer versus using an excavator <laughs> um, for that project. So, I mean, we know it's a challenge. Yes, it is our course. We do anticipate and do plan on continuing to make improvements down there. Yeah, so Trustee Jim, you would ask this to come forward. Did what Sean say cover your questions? Um, some of it. Um, I had more questions as far as what. So you got your permission to cross, but it's only if you didn't have your permission once you built the berm, so you drive a rock truck over it. Like this park isn't going away. We shouldn't have to do this all by hand forever. So since the park isn't going away, what's our plan moving forward to? If we have to build a 10 foot high berm so we can drive over this thing with a car or a truck or a bus or an excavator or whichever, we can do that. Like, dirt is not that expensive. We have the equipment here. In fact, we probably have dirt on my street. We have down here. I don't know if it's fancy gas pipeline dirt that we got to bring, but like, like, can we work with them so that we can work an idea so we don't have to cut this thing with scissors every time, right? And if, if there's a tree falling out, we need equipment in there to make sure this out. Like, staff time. It's expensive to send, send staff out there, and it's really expensive to send staff out there with scissors instead of real equipment. And especially when we have this stuff, we might have got a whole garage full of cool tools out there that make our lives easier. Um, let's, let's leverage those those tools and equipment. Um, and then, what is the arrangement moving forward as far as maintaining this stuff? Hey, we're going to dedicate the third Monday of the month is Nebraska Day, and we're going to go down and we're going to spend time here. Cutting trees or doing brush or firing scissors or whatever you got to do. And then what, what does the timeline look like for we're going to get holes for hole markers and all the other stuff in the wetland delineation? Like it sounds like a lot of these things have started, but there's no solid timeline of how we're going to implement and put this stuff in place or we, we see results. Anything I missed for that? So the delineation has been completed. Um, so we have what areas can be improved. Um, and as far as signage, um, it's something that I was looking at immediately after being uh, brought up previously. So it's definitely something we can take care of in a short time period. And we can put a schedule together as far as how we're gonna move forward with the improvements there. I feel like I could be wrong, Sean, but having been on the Committee for a while now. Um, it seems like there is some disconnect between the committee and the disc golf group, um, and maybe even within the group itself, where um, it doesn't seem like even within the group they have a real defined direction on what they want to see down there. Um, and I think that makes it really difficult for us. If you want to maintain something, well, then I would like to maintain it to what the group wants it done to, you know, but we need some kind of, yeah, like something set in stone, not this back and forth and what can we do and what can't we do. Um, I do live next door to the, to the park and it drives me crazy every day that I drive past it because I really dislike how it looks. It looks crappy. It looks un, unmaintained, um, in my opinion. And then Sean and I have had conversations about the brush and some people like the brush because it's a, an obstacle and other people hate it. And like, so what is, what is the goal? And I guess I don't know how to get the appropriate people in here to decide and then let's have a plan and this is what, what we move towards. Cause these guys, I mean, they don't have any idea what they're supposed to be doing if, if the group that's using it the most doesn't really know what they want. And I think, so that's part of my frustration with this place. And I have volunteered 
our equipment and our time. Um, we have equipment literally next door that we can, we know we can drive across the pipeline because we drive across it every day. You know, so I know that our equipment is, is usable and, but again, to get the stakeholders together and make anything happen has just been grinding. And you are correct. The vision has changed multiple times, <laughs> like multiple times, literally like we built the course and then we have one individual that's really super pumped to do something and he's out there for two, three years and then he falls off the radar. Right. And then we have two guys that revision the course putting two pins, two T pads at each hole, and then one gets married, and I'm actually saying this, he actually, one got married, and those two disappeared. And then last year, we had a group from, was here just golf, but we also have a group from Anago. I don't know if you recall that. They came here from Anago. They're looking for a course that could host tournaments and improve this course to the point where it could be utilized for that. Um, but, the bulk of the Boston disc golf enthusiasts don't feel like that's a tournament course. So you have two different visions of two groups using the course right now. Um, you know, Boston disc golf does host league there every Wednesday night. They're, they've been doing it all summer. They've been doing it for multiple years. Um, we keep in contact with them on a regular basis. And um, we work back and forth all the time. So yes, the course may not look perfect to a lot of people, but if it was in totally total disarray based on being able to use it, we would know because they would let us. <laughs> Even though you may not, th you think it's in total disarray. Right. I mean, literally, we were informed about the tree down and then disc golf contacted me. It's like, there's a tree down on fairway five and they showed up two days later, cut it up and asked us if we could come and remove it because they didn't want to do it by hand. So they're playing it on a regular basis where we go down there, check garbage Mondays, Wednesdays, we mow the pipeline section, um, empty garbages, et cetera. But, you know, we don't play the course. Well, it sounds like you have contact information. Maybe we, you know, can give them a shout, invite them to the course meeting, get their vision. And, and, and we do have the seven page proposal from last spring. From that. That's what? last spring. Yeah. And, and we could definitely get them back here. And as far as moving forward, and like I said, put a schedule timeline together yeah. as far as Can we invite them back or invite them here in the first place. And this is the plan we're working with. And not that you would be hard headed about it if somebody came with a little suggestion or something, right. but that this is it. We're, we're not, you know, we can't be going back and forth. We want this to be maintained. And it's one with a plan. One vision, one direction, doesn't matter if leadership changes. Right. I mean, and that's what we've been looking at with Kennedy Park and, you know, member of Brandon of understanding with groups because as we know leadership changes youth groups all had their elections here recently as far as their boards and those could change but if you have this in place then future board knows exactly which way you're going well, that's and responsibilities i know you've talked for a couple of years now about this golf but it's going one way and then another way and it's Uh, next on the agenda, Kennedy Park Foundation marketing campaign. Um, and if I could just sneak in, I don't know if you want to do this before or after, but we did have a committee member request the audio from the BLT meeting. Agenda item number 40 regarding Kennedy Park Foundation marketing campaign. Um, so if you could kindly hold a video or the audio file from parts and send that to the committee. One second, I just got it. I'm going to share it off of the other computer. Oh, 
Well, it, it might, given that we had the meeting and I handed out the notes from it, do we want to talk through the notes? Because then maybe that's a new agreement since the since the board meeting. So at the, I'm the one who requested the audio come forward. So during the board meeting and the audio in question, Sean, you had spoken about how fundraising was delayed because we didn't have prices for things in the park yet. And the reason I asked for that to come forward is because that's the first time I've heard that. And also, as a fundraiser, we, we don't need prices for things to go raise money. So I don't know, I I don't know where that came from, and I don't know the strategy behind waiting to define costs before we begin to raise money. I think a lot of it had to do with naming rights specifically. So if you don't have an actual cost for a scoreboard, a fence, um, how do you go out there and fundraise for it when you have a cost estimate, which is a broad cost estimate that was done with the master plan, but actual actual prices you won't have till you bid it out. And I understand it's frustrating, but no, I think no, I think it's uh, I think it's more than frustrating. I think that it's a uh, hindrance to our fundraising. So. As a narrative, we would like to raise $14 million for the Kennedy Park renovation. The idea that we're going to stop fundraising until we can define what a fence costs, it, we, we simply keep pushing this down the road, right? And Jamie had some meetings and, and, to, and this stuff came out of them, but we have, it's it is, it is a fair estimation to say that we have continued to push action down the road on fundraising, on things like an MOU, on, on large pieces of what is going to be as large a project as the building we're sitting in. And we, we it is an inaccurate statement to say that we need to have those things defined before we can raise money. And you just need to share that with us because we were asked the questions. Okay. So we were asked those questions. We were trying to provide those answers. And if the firm, the people we're working with are asking those questions, we'd love to provide accurate numbers. But we can start with the, the 14 and a half million. And we, we talked about, maybe I'll, I'll segue to, um, I handed out, it's four pages, just the Kennedy Park touch base with the friends group and the marketing firm that we did last week. Um, Michael can chime in too. We had just started with a little bit on the engineering and the construction update of where we were at. And we're at 90 plus percent of that engineering piece being done with that focus being on phase one. Um, and there was a question that was asked through that process about if we could do a groundbreaking and start construction this fall. And we certainly can. We talked about that the village could even start that process because field one is uneven and we're gonna have to move some of the earth from the north end of the field to the south end of the field. And so that process can get started with that excavating. And then what we would wanna do is put out a sign there that would say future home of, and kick off the campaign with that groundbreaking. Um, it's a little bit later in the, the four pages, but we sort of update it then that phase plan because we revisit it. Do we agree about the creative brief that we, we had brought forth and talked about with G Morty and the makers? We still said that's still valid. The creative, the creative brief is still good. Um, and we talked about that 14.5 and just is that the comfort level with all of the groups and it, they all said yes, because they really want the five fields and they want to make sure that there's money in place afterwards for upkeep and maintenance. And if there would be any future additions or changes along the way. So um, that would leads to what I, up on the screen there, as far as this would be, these were mock-ups that were done by G Morty for posters and signage. Um, some of these, 
pricing pieces then can get taken off of and we can focus on that that fourteen and a half million dollar goal because he does have some um he has some prices on here. Like you can see cement for the for hockey ice and tables and chairs and 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 fencing. Um but we did talk about that we kind of wanna revise this top piece that it wouldn't say play, skate and thrive. Uh, that it that would it would be something that sort of encompassed all sports like let's hit it out of the park or a different slogan that would be more encompassing to to all of the sports. More creative relating to baseball. Minus the bars. So the piece from here that we, for these creative pieces, that was a big question from G. Morty as far as the sort of funneling it through the line to, so we can get those pieces sort of up and running and that promotional video up and running and the signage done that would be out at the park. And we, we talked about a subgroup that would be Sarah Olofsson, um, Jamie Weiland from the committee and myself that we would, we would get through these these pieces so we could get them updated and released and we could get something to the signage company so we could get something on at the park and we could get the first that would be a shorter promotional video done and released to all of the groups and out there on social media so that could all coincide with this groundbreaking that would be this fall and placing a landing page off of our website that would reflect all that same material, that that poster, um, that signage that we would be doing, but that then is gonna direct link to the community foundation because all donations run through the community foundation. Um, and then I, I did just, there's a, a piece in here at the end that we talked about as far as communications. Um, the Friends group is gonna be doing an update every two weeks that then Sarah will copy over to uh, the village um, for us to distribute. And then Sarah and Jim Olofsson would be added to the, the Parks and Rec Committee agenda notices. So they would be getting those when the committee gets to them. We're gonna have a, a Kennedy Park renovation and capital, cam, capital campaign update placed on, on Sean's monthly report um, so that it would be tracked on there. And then the, that subgroup would be meeting and then bringing forth the determinations from these marketing pieces just so that piece can move a little bit quicker through the through the process. I just had a couple of comments. Um, I want to build off of something that Parks Director said at the last board of trustees meeting that this is a marathon of the sprint and we shouldn't be rushing into this. My concern is April 22nd, we're all in this room and and it was talked about, about making this memorandum of understanding between the, the friends group and the Village of Weston and the, the marketing firm. So everybody knew what we were doing. Uh, funds were authorized to be expended uh, late April. Right? So now here we sit, almost six months later, and we're doing, in my opinion, what we should have done in April or maybe May. Like now this ship is sailed and everyone in Village of has passed. The marketing firm didn't meet any of them. They came back and said, oh, it's going to be two weeks later, however far back they pushed the timeline. That was last week, and they didn't meet a single one. Or if they met some, we didn't get at all what we paid for. Uh, the Village of Weston residents did not get $25,000 of the market. They didn't get $12,500 of the market. They got whatever we see here, but it's delivered six months late. This is not at all what, what we signed up for. We didn't get what we paid for. Uh, I think continuing to work with the same firm is just not on a good path. I'd like to see us get our money back and find someone different that is interested in doing this and moving forward, signing an agreement um, to, to actually stand behind what they're going to do. Um, I'm just super disappointed with how this has all turned out. Um, we, we still don't have all these meetings that I feel like should have been taking place throughout this entire thing, and they're not. They're just now starting like, hey, let's start meeting now every two weeks. Why? What did we do all summer? How many meetings were now? Like, um, or if there were some, 
I don't see progress that came out of them. Um, just very disappointed in, in this entire project. And we've got some folks here that were promised some things that they were going to get this thing going and get moving. And, and where's our action? We have nothing to hang our hat on. I saw nothing in phase one for helping out hockey. Like, yeah, we want to get this first ball filled up. That's cool. Um, I don't think the hockey folks are going to play. They're not going to skate on the ball field. So where are we with that? There were restrooms and shelter and all this other stuff. Like our entire timeline needs to be revisited. We're, we're so behind the eight ball on this. I think you need to scrap the entire plan that you have and start over and get actual commitments and deadlines. And this will be done by this date. And these are these benchmarks that we have. And and hold folks accountable for those deliverables and the lack thereof. Thank you. Yeah. So to, to piggyback on the idea of deliverables and a uh, and plan, I I would like that the working group to come up with a strategic plan that includes dates and directions for Arts Department and for the Friends Kennedy Park. Because to be fair, I understand that it's a marathon and I support the idea that it's a marathon. But we haven't had concrete dates to work with up to this point in this process. And the ones that we have from G Morty have, have skated by and totally understand, you know, somebody built a $50 million building, so Sarah's busy, has been busy. But at the same time, we we don't we lack both a strategic and an operational plan that would be best described as, as something that's taking on a fourteen million dollar fundraising project. So we've had we have a bunch of ideas and we have a partnership with some really cool people, but I think our staff has to come up with a timeline. Um, I would also have to say I'm disappointed that Jim Morgan hasn't made any of the timelines. I'm not impressed by the marketing at all. At all. Um, why are we picking those pictures? Uh, why do we have that headline? I mean, I also don't feel like we're getting any money for it. Um, if we paid them half, I think we should stop right now and move on to a different marketing term. But that's fine. And I don't know why we're creating subcommittees, small groups. We've given them, we had an hour and a half meeting. We gave him ideas, and now we're supposed to meet again and give him more ideas. What are we paying him for? We, he wouldn't be meeting with that subgroup. The subgroup would just be refining these pieces and then what, what, sending what them to like Refining these pieces. The, the slogan piece. We, we gave him an idea that play skate drive means nothing for baseball. What, why are we meeting again to beat that horse? We talked about that. That's what that subgroup would do in order to move the process for all the marketing materials. We're not going to meet deadlines if we keep talking about this. And if, if we did end the agreement, um, then I think we would have to either explore, I also, I, I thought the piece of getting the, the groundbreaking done by Halloween, by the end of October, and moving the earth out there was a, was a, a good idea for the kickoff. If we changed marketing firms, that potentially also delays that. I can tell you, I hired a marketing firm. They had all of this done within 30 days. I paid them $2,000. Again, I don't think we're getting that money for it. And now he's out of town for a week. That's not my fault. And now I'm supposed to meet tomorrow because he's out of town and be creative and think for him. He has clips of video, but he's, he hasn't produced anything. Why? I don't have an answer to you. Yeah. Um, so I think as far as the groundbreaking and all of that, I think that that is a commitment that the village made 
to baseball and softball, and I think we should honor that. I think the idea of tying a marketing event to that when there are questions about the marketing content and campaign and fundraising campaign. And given the idea that we return to the idea that it's a marathon, not a sprint, I think that there are hard objective questions that it sounds like need to be asked of G. Morty and the makers. And if we are going to explore moving on from them, then I think it's fair that we can release that idea of having a groundbreaking event and simply focus on the objective deliverable of getting a baseball field done for, or a softball field, whatever the field's for, um, getting that field done. And then in parallel, we can revisit the, the strategic plan for marketing and fundraising as in my opinion, that is worth spending time and effort on revisiting because as of now, even given the update here, it is not defined as to where we want to go. And so I would encourage us to just either step back to the beginning with, with Gerald or step back to the beginning internally and come up with our own working timeline with the friends up. Because we don't have a timeline and we shouldn't generate a false starting point without a second point in the timeline. Thank you, Dean. Yeah. I just have one more quick comment. I'm sorry, I missed that it was on the next page, but um, there's, I think, four different uh, spots in here where um, the Morty talks about cost for cement. I surely hope that the intent is for concrete to be placed for these items and not cement because cement is just one ingredient in the recipe for concrete. And if we show up with just cement or even just for cement, I don't think that um, our park is going to perform the way that it is designed. Right. And also on the ask letter, I think I that in the ask letter, nowhere we mentioned Weston, Weston community, and Weston. That's pretty disappointing. You know, can I just ask for a little clarity on the, I understand the working timeline piece, but then do we still, are we still feeling good about the groundbreaking, even if we did make a transition on the marketing? So I think, yeah. So I think, yes, if we're going to have a groundbreaking, yeah, bring Paul McCartney and have a big show. I think it's fine. I don't know if he's busy or not. Well, I have to check. Have friends. <laughs> I'm saying we could have we can make a big show of it. But, I would like in the minutes that Dino thinks Paul McCarthy is yeah. different. <laughs> but the, but the, it is I, I want to stress that it's crucial that that marketing and all of the marketing that we've seen so far can't commit us to anything, right? It it shouldn't because it's not flushed out. So yeah, I think we should have a party for the groundbreak because I think that that would be really cool just because I think ribbon cuttings are awesome, but um, and cranes and diggers and all that stuff is super cool. But at the same time, yeah, I think that your work group has really got to, to, to bang on the drum of making a strategic plan and making an operational plan with the calendar. I, I urge you to have a calendar when you guys meet sitting in front of you so you can work backwards from $14 million, right? So in 2029, we're going to have 14 million dollars, and how do we break that up backwards? But yes, I'm totally cool having a, a giant party for the groundbreaking. Uh, we work on a total budget, so yeah, no, no, it's fine, no, it's absolutely cool because. I think I advocate for Gerald. I think he can step up and do the job, and it was Gerald. So um, we spent uh, 10 years in the basement of Yankee Bookstore with lots of people who had vested interests in the 400 block. 
including a glockenspiel. Um, yeah, it's a little bad. Um, and then once we, the way that process worked is we worked hard to come up with a design as private citizens and what we wanted to do with the 400 block. Um, and then once we came up with the design, then um, Dr. Joe and his wife worked, Freeman, yeah, Joe and Mary Claire, went and worked with Bill Forrest on, cha on championing that through the Wasa City Council. And then they agreed on a process or on a design, which is what you see now. And then this, the courthouse committee changed to the square up committee. And then we went and raised that money. And we had an MOU at the beginning because we committed to, to raising money for the maintenance and for the cost of the water. Because there's a water element there. And Gerald and his partner, Dan, through their prior company, Flapjack Creative, did the creative for the square up committee. But the, the fundraising plan was really Joe Mella, the attorney, who got all the money for us. I'd like to say it was me, but I think it was all Joe. <laughs> That's my only concern. Because I wouldn't want us changing. I'm not necessarily happy with how long it's taking to get something. But I don't want to change to a new marketing firm if it's going to delay the development of the park. It's, you know, if we're going to start scratch one. Maybe that hurt can move our papers a little faster and meet deadlines, though. I also think, <laughs> Maybe. yeah, Barb, I think we're at square one. So I think we haven't gotten past that. You know, that has been my concern yeah. all along. That we keep seeing, it seems like we're spinning our wheels and going nowhere. Well, I would like to ask you the newspapers. Well, I, like I mentioned before, I like the timeline of, of having that kickoff this fall, mm -hmm. having that, I wrote down party. It's a, a fun event that kicks off the, the park development. Um, I thought that, I think G. Morty is willing to work with us. If we express this to him, I think that that he's willing to work with us. But if we would bring these items back and not be satisfied, then I think that's a, that might be a different conversation. But he has indicated that, that he wants to be a part of this, right? So And he, he does have several of the pieces and maybe with that final bit of direction, it all pulls together really quickly. I think somebody has to sit down with him and tell him mm -hmm. what we want. We did. And, and tell him if he did some on paper, he's going out the door. Simple as that. But we we haven't we didn't have updated these are the pieces that came before the, the Friday meeting. Dino is just yeah, so um in in I'm there's absolutely no way you know this off the top of your head, but if you could go back and look at the contract with Gerald and see if we own the content that he created, specifically the video that he shot. We do. Okay, so we own that. Yes. So that we can take what he shot. Okay, good. All right. We could just talk on could you just no, we already we, 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 we already had that discussion. Oh, you did? I can, oh, okay, I can okay. forward you the email because we've already had discussions. Okay. That was that was to some extent what led up to our meeting on Friday was there was a huge disconnect. We understand that between the village, the marketing, the friends group, and just sharing information, 
who's in charge of approvals, how many layers do we have to go through for approvals of the marketing content. So it did stall things and slow things down a lot. So that was part of the reason for the meeting Friday was to make sure that we were all on the same page moving forward. We set a tentative deadline timeline as far as how things were going to happen. So um, that's how we came up at the end of October for a ground bit breaking ceremony was meeting tomorrow, update the ask letter, anything else, you know, don't let the play skate thrive. Um, there is a brain dump document that was shared also that gives a lot of ideas, but to just actually who approves that, who approves that, who approves that, you know, I mean, we can't go baseball only, but if we're doing two letters, you know, one for skate, skating, you know, um, baseball, softball, or. But here's the thing. Friday, we gave him all of that. Friday, we told him what we didn't like about the ask letter that it didn't mention one to at all. Friday, we told him that these pictures right here mean nothing about the fundraiser, mean nothing about Kennedy Park. Why is there a bridge? What does that have to do with baseball? I mean, it's, it's pretty simple. I, I don't know. I, I'm looking at this like my 10 year old would think about better, really. I'm, I'm really disturbed about it, um, clearly. So I'd like to focus on the party. <laughs> um, just because. You don't have any more. Yeah. yeah, that's okay. I I would like us to say, or I would like it if Weston throws the party, that the staff, that we take that off the hands of Gerald, mm -hmm. because I'm guessing things are going to fall on Gerald's hands. But if, you know, Jamie and her cool friends throw a party for the, for the new field, I think that that, that should be pull back to us and come away from Gerald. And that should be something that the staff of Western does. Because nobody parties at the staff of Western. We do have food here tonight too. I I just so, yeah. And then as far as like Jamie described a group of Sarah, Jamie, and Jamie. I mean, I, I think that I think that Gerald is way behind on this. And I think he is just as a dude who's done this, he's out in the weeds and he's lacking direction. And I don't know if that's us or the process that we started months ago with yeah, with with the friends of, but I, I, I would guess that if you asked Gerald privately, he would say he's out in the weeds on this and he doesn't have a good idea because he's far more, he's far better than this. We've all seen his work, you know. And I, it's, I have it. Okay, well, I, I have it, and this is what I see for twenty-five thousand no. dollars. So I think he's much better than this, and I think it's because he's out in the weeds. And I think if you guys come up with a process between the three of you, a way to hold him accountable. Right? Otherwise, yeah, this is yeah, like you're saying, this is this is not up to him, and so it it. But at, at the same time, what I'll, do you need I'm sorry. What do you need? He's done better than this. That's what I'm saying. I've seen his, I've directly worked with him before. And it is my opinion that this is not up to his standard or himself. I'm defending him just a little bit. But I would also say that. I think he burned that bridge. That's fine. <laughs> I, th I think that, you know, this process is, has been damaged. And as a result, we're getting substandard mm -hmm. work. And so I think that. If, if the three of you can come up with a, an operational plan going forward, I think that that's, that would be my first step. And the second step in parallel is holding Gerald accountable for what is substandard work for him. And then if that all has to happen right now, like right now, the three of you have to meet and come up with a calendar plan and a strategic plan and an operational plan like right now because it's a marathon and not a sprint, but Paul McCartney's coming to town to celebrate the Kennedy Park thing. So we gotta look good, but yeah. I guess I, I will agree to get together for another meeting. Um, 
in regards to a timeline, but I refuse to do his work. And I, I would like to bring that back to BOT in regards to this contract and what we are saying. Okay. 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 So, uh, G. Morty would be looking for that last bit of direction to update these pieces. You've given the feedback and the feedback we got on Friday. I think we can give that to him tomorrow. Do we want him to do that work? Because I, I just want to be clear whether or not, if he does that work, that's going to take off that, that account and, and give him the opportunity to bring these things up. Or are we, do we not want to do that opportunity? Because then it's really just the calendar and we ask him where he is to date on work completed. I don't see what he comes up with for $12,500. Yeah. So this, this right here is not $12,500. What question I had is you had that meeting Friday. Yes. Was this the result of that? No. Or this no. was before that? This is before. before. That, okay. now, now they want to meet again yeah. and balance marketing ideas off and talk about the ad splitter again. And I just don't, I feel like we already did that. So I don't know why we're meeting again. We, we hadn't come to a final decision on Friday. We said that would be for the three, for the subgroup, because the subgroup now would be that, that approval process. So I think he was looking for the, the final decision on those pieces that would be put into those materials. Yeah, I guess you already know my he can run with that and then circle back. Yeah. No, you can move a version. Sure. So clear direction is really what he's looking for. So as we met Friday, you said, why is Weston not mentioned in this stuff? In the we re we removed the Village Weston logo from mm -hmm. this stuff. So what direction did we give him? Remove it and then add it back. Is that that's not clear yeah. to him? I mean, we said remove the half moon with the colors. We don't want it relate. Re, we don't want it to be tied to the village because when you're going to ask for money, you don't want it to be the village. So now he got feedback on Friday that we want Weston mentioned in there. So I think that's not a definitive direction. And yes, you can tell him you changed your mind, and that's what we want to do. But he didn't put it in there. Sure. Probably I mean, for a specific reason. It's, it's just adding Weston or not adding Weston. I know, it's but but yes, but yes, I'm, and you I'm gave that direct, about, and you I'm gave not. that, and you gave that direction. Right. Which is fine. And he said, anything you want me to include, tell me, and provide me with, you know, if there's background stuff. You know, we talked about. The accomplishments of the parks, the dog park, the skate park, the pool, you know, including that in the ask letter. We just need to give him that information. He doesn't know all that stuff. So that is. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's okay. a digital Western community. So. Right, right. And did you read the ask letter? Right. Or did you just like two spots where you could add Western or not have Western? Oh, well, yeah. But I said there is, I was sitting there going. Wait a minute, I thought I seen Wesley mention it. It is in the subject line. Yeah. On top. Yeah. Help us get it up. Okay. So to, to respond to the to the asked letter issue. So I, I gave my notes to to Sarah when I got the asked letter. Um so when we had started the process, the the idea for the narrative was the tremendous accomplishments of Western Parks in the larger narrative of building towards Kennedy Park and the completion of Turner. So that's, I mean, that's the thing where we can make an objective case that these things have happened and continuing that work is of value. But without, but that appears absolutely nowhere in that letter. And that's fine. Somebody made a choice. I'm going to guess that Gerald and Sarah worked on that letter together. And part of that process is that whenever this, whenever we had a, been a meeting about this, we empowered the two of them to work together on marketing material, right? So the, the working theory is that it's, it's better for the friends of 
to raise money for to ask for money for us than it is for the village of Weston to ask for money. But there's absolutely no doubt that the village of Weston is asking for money because the reality is, and again, the reason for the MOU is because of Sarah and the friends of don't raise the money, we're not going to build Kennedy Park right now. The trustees, I think have all made it pretty clear, they're not gonna invest 14 million bucks in a baseball complex and a really big skate park with Paul McCartney coming out of it. But that being said, we made a choice, this body did, to, to allow Gerald and Sarah to work on this ask letter. So now I think it's important that the three of you have to take some control of this process and be a part of that because it, it can't just be them. Because if it is, it's important, and I want to state it again, I, I say it at every meeting, um, we, we did empower them. This is a letter that's not going to come from the Village Weston. They're going to send this out. Yeah, we're paying for it, but it's going to come from the Friends of Kennedy Park, and if the Friends of Kennedy Park decide that this ask letter is cool, they're going to send it, but we can't technically stop them. Right? And so I, I think that advocating for the, the Jamie, Jamie, Sarah group to essentially get together and crack the whip on this stuff, I think is important. And, and yeah, I mean, I think that all of the pieces are not, are not where, if I'm a member of the Friends of Kennedy Park, they're not where I want to be. If I'm a member of the Parks Commission, they're not where I want to be, especially if Paul McCartney's going to be. Now that's the new skate park. Yeah. So, and I, I don't want to be misconstrued as we don't want it tied to Weston. One of the things that Jamie brought up was where is Kennedy Park? Yeah. Making sure it's identified, it's in Weston. She brought up this point on Friday. Like, that's one of the big things is where is Kennedy Park? I know where Kennedy Park is. I know. And, that, and it was a great point you brought up. <laughs> it needs to be identified. Kennedy Park in Weston. And, you know, me bringing up the logo was part of, you know, we don't want, they don't want the government in there, but the village of Weston, as far as where this is taking place, is important. Yeah, I, I think that the But I don't like, I can't figure out other than Kennedy Park, I wouldn't know where I was. I know my 10 years old. I mean, there's, there's a picture that doesn't look like Kennedy Park. The bridge is a Kennedy Park, yeah. by the way. <laughs> it's an old picture, though, because yeah. the barn in the background was taken down a long time ago. There's a school building there now. Right. You are correct. That is an old <laughs> picture. Where did they find that? What I didn't nerd. share it with them. What a nerd you are. <laughs> <laughs> well, I kept looking at that bridge, and I thought... So the bridge was put in around 2002. I was thinking... Well, and the bridge, farm that was back there was the quarry. I remember. I just know Michael that the, remember who it was. the school put up their new building. The, right the farm there. where the admin building is. Corey. Yeah. yeah, it's Corey. Yeah. So, so you guys have the three have have a plan to meet whenever you're going to meet tomorrow, and and then yeah, and then you're going to move forward. But. <laughs> I guess we're going to make a fresh timeline of dates. Is that is but, that why we're meeting? Because I again I'm not I'm not doing this work for you. Understood. And I think the the starting with the end in mind and taking where where we want to be, what's the date and time that would be the goal when we would be done raising funds and then going back from there. Um, is a piece where we get to that tomorrow. I think the focus for tomorrow is just getting this information to G Morty to update these to see if we bring this up to speed and sharing that back with the parks committee. Yeah. I don't, I still, I don't, I, I guess, you know. I, I just, I don't, I don't uh -huh. understand where Friday went. I mean, we, we went through all of that. I mean, but we at them on Friday we didn't ask him to have updated materials for Monday. I mean I, that wasn't that wasn't an ask on Friday. 
in fairness to to the makers, that wasn't an ask. He's already missed his deadlines. He should have been. What deadlines did he have? I'm sorry, I don't yeah. interject here, but you keep saying that, and I heard Dino earlier say that there was no definitive timeline and no clear direction. There, to give. There is. Yeah, so yeah, I'll answer. So yeah. Steve, the campaign, there were if if you go back in the notes and how Jim's got the notes, there was a, a sort of a commitment to dates of when Gerald was going to do stuff, and the campaign was supposed to launch on the 15th of this month, and that didn't happen. Even even if we were to accept that all of this is fine and good, we still did nothing still happened on the 15th. Which I understand, but were they given clear direction? Oh. I'm hearing some of you saying no. I'm hearing Sean saying no. I'm saying you saying no. I kind of heard the same thing from Jamie. So I guess in the spirit of trying to move this along, so, I mean, yeah, were they given I'm, a fair shape? I, I'm gonna I'm gonna answer the question. Um so there was a there was a meeting that was held in which um, this body essentially said that the friends of G. Morty were going to work closely together, directly together, if you will. And out of that work is when the timeline that you're holding in your hand came out of. So this body didn't work with, with G. Morty and the makers directly, and I've only seen them at one, at one meeting so far. So this body has not worked with him. I don't know if the staff has worked with him directly, other than the one meeting that you guys just had. Did you? Have you guys worked with Gerald before the meeting? No, no, the staff. Was the staff I've working? corresponded with him. Um, he did attend the July meeting. That's the one you're yeah. talking about. Um, and what came out of that meeting was that we needed more direction. He needed more direction out of it. I felt I felt like that meeting wasn't as productive as it could have been because they were looking for feedback at that time. And I think that, like you said, the clear direction thing, he was working with the friends group and then we asked him to come to the committee level. And I don't think we got, I don't think we got the feedback that was expected at that point. Right, but if, so in, in, a, in a process, you know, someone, hires Gerald to do some, hires a marketing firm to do something, sends them off, they come back and come up with some ideas. So in, in the municipal setup, that conversation would, would come from you, the staff. You guys would meet with Gerald or a marketing firm. The complication that we created was the friends of were going to meet with Gerald. And then this July meeting that you're talking about was the hopes that Gerald was going to bring back um, deliverables that we could talk about. Because it's a, a parks committee meeting is not a place for essentially, I, I think, for us to sort of brain dump marketing ideas. I think that's an offline meeting that, that happens in a conference room somewhere that isn't broadcast on Zoom, that isn't in, that isn't in violation of the meeting or law. But, it, it also sounds like, Steve, that the, that the staff and the disconnect that we've had for several months between Gerald working with the friends of and also being funded by this body and board of trustees and working with the staff, that disconnect, I, I think, came to a head recently. And now Administrator Gaber has grabbed the reins in the horse and sounds like she has a plan going forward. So I think that's, I mean, I am not at all cool with any of this, but it sounds like there's a plan going forward. So I, I literally think as a member of this body and as someone who has done this work and to, to speak to what, where Barb was at, we are at literally space minus one and work has to be done before we can get to square one and the disconnect kill, killed that timeline for us and some of that was self-created and some of that was because one of our partners was building a 52 million dollar building so I, I think that that's that's where we are and again to give credit to administrator Gaylord, she grabbed the horse and had a meeting 
it sounds like there's going to be meetings going forward. So, yeah. That's, am I close? And Paul McCartney to stay in your house. <laughs> well, I, I agree with what you're saying. And, and the other thing I think, and I think um, Sean mentioned it, is when he did look at that first letter, he said, well, we didn't want the village of Weston to be highlighted if yeah. we would in that because this was the friends of no, yeah, um, I think that, that was a discussion about the logo. I don't yeah, think that right, was, it was right, right, right. right. But I'm just wondering not if you saying that if he interpreted that. Yeah, we I don't. Need, you know. Yeah, I don't think we need to, to read his mind or no. anything. I think we're just going to have to chalk this up as a bunch of months of not going well okay. and and sort of give Jamie the opportunity to, to bring this thing back around. Yes. Because we need to get it going. Yeah, yeah, no. Thank you, Jim, for this. Lead. So, what, what if he doesn't meet the timelines that we create tomorrow? What if? Then I think that we would discontinue that agreement and we would move on. But yeah, we, right. yeah, but we'd still be planning the party. It's a marathon, not a sprint. We can always stop and restart. I think that's the deal. This hasn't, this three months has not gone according to any plan. And as a result, you know, yeah, I think that if, if you guys come out of your time frame and say, this is what we want, Gerald, can you meet these deadlines? And he says yes, and then he doesn't, then I think. You hold them to the contract and look, these are deliverables that you agree to under our terms of our contract, and we're moving on. Can I ask that you can ask their opinion also? Okay. No. Well, he's just a hot. Well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But go ahead. Um, <laughs> I really don't want to speak for Sarah. Uh, there's a lot of things that she's probably uh, in the middle of or aware of that I'm not. So I, I don't think it would be appropriate for me to, I guess, make an official comment on behalf of the Friends of Kennedy Park. Is that? Because I was just sitting there wondering, if, you know, how this is delaying your plan. You know. I would like to see a copy of the contract with Jamie as well. If he doesn't fulfill, fulfill that. You know, what do we have to like We can email that agreement to the committee tomorrow morning for a copy. Anybody else? Okay. Move on the agenda for Street, Honeyland, Storm. So I'm gonna let Michael take this one since it is a streets project, but making sure the committee knows what's in the future plans. Yeah, I guess it's kind of FYI as we're working through uh, some of our regional stormwater uh, requirements through the DNR. Uh, the reconstruction of Fuller Street uh, seems like there's a good opportunity to uh, reuse or. Uh, I guess take advantage of the open green space that is at Kellyland Park for a dual purpose. Uh, the idea would be to kind of sink down the soccer fields. They're already somewhat lower than the uh, like parking lot area for the dog park. There's a natural berm there and then it lowers and then it's flattened out. And then that yet falls off to the Oakley River floodplain. So I guess the proposed plan right now is to uh, dig those uh, fields down a little bit further probably about another four feet for uh, conveyance of stormwater. So when uh, we get heavy rain events, they would hold water and then they would be graded and uh, infiltrate in. So the next day it should be grass. So this is a, a soccer field uh, picture. If you anyone's familiar with uh, Madison Memorial High School or uh, West Town Mall in Madison, this is kind of right in between the two. Uh, there's a creek that flows through the middle and then on either side of the creek are hockey our soccer fields and when there's a big rain event the creek rises and the soccer fields flood and then 
two days later, water goes back to the creek and the soccer fields are used for soccer. So uh, it'd be a similar concept to what we'd be using Kelly Land for. But it would still remain a soccer field. It would still remain a soccer field. There would still be soccer goals and still be a mowed grass. Um, it would still be a recreational like, facility. They won't like pond. It, it, it would only pond like as it's raining, you know, uh, maybe a, a day after if it's a really large rain event or early spring, but then it's also probably frozen around and cold and probably not like the time. My dog would be cool if it was hot. Yeah. We are currently in design on that and realize that uh, didn't update the park committee on. Uh, you see bulldozers or excavators out on Kelly Land Park next summer. That's it's what's happening, but it will be returned back to a, a recreational field. And it would happen next year with the reconstruction of four. Correct. Yeah. yeah. It's being paid for by the stormwater utilities. It is a stormwater use. Really, just looking for the community to acknowledge that they are aware that this plan for this site. Um, there's no real approval. It is, like I said, it is a project that um, the village needs to complete to help with their stormwater requirements. And I guess I think the motion to acknowledge of the utilizing Kennedy Park is a basement district. Mm -hmm. uh, motion by Early. I second. Second by Clark. Any more discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 So uh, I have a few items. Um, so we did receive a notice of a tentative award of a grant for the new kayak launch improvements at Yellowbanks. Um, it would be a 50-50 matching grant. They will be contacting us yet this fall as far as completing an agreement with them. Um, no work can take place. Um, and it would be, like I said, a 50 matching. We did anticipate utilizing some forced labor and equipment um, to cover our portion. Um, and as far as the whole dollar amount, if we were able to utilize our forced labor and equipment, we're looking at $24,000 to $26,000 in actual cash portion of our, our cost share. Just, just how do you define forced labor? Forced labor? Yeah. Forced labor is- That might mean something to, oh, that's you. <laughs> <laughs> Or slammer. No, I'm, I'm saying we can come up with a better way to. That's that's what that. that's what they you call raise it. Your hand? They call yeah. it yeah. They <laughs> call it forced labor, um, in the application process. Oh, it's your internal forces. Oh, okay. Because you know, that, you know, yeah. historically, that's not the best phrase. Right. I said yes. force, not forced. I said force, force, not forced. <laughs> um. And we had a pump failure over the weekend on one of our sumps at the aquatic center. It's not a major detail, but it did, because of the rain event, it is our stormwater pump for the aquatic center site. Um, so our current um, sump pit in the back is approximately half full. Um, it was a pump that was serviced and rebuilt the spring. I contacted the company already stated that they screwed up and it will be covered 100%. Um, so it, it wasn't, you don't typically expect a pump to fail within months of getting it serviced. Um, so that, um, and then Jamie has nicely brought up the fact that we, and I did bring it up at the last meeting that we had with lost supply regarding them, um, possibly doing a project with the village. We did visit three sites. It was um, well number six. The metal building behind this building, and then this little that snack shack, 
There's so there's well house, the snack shack, and then there's a shed which is right alongside of the snack shack, which actually used to be a farmer's market. The old farmer's market, fifty five hundred, um, and it was moved to Kennedy Park quite a few years ago. Um, it actually is all treated lumber. Uh, the paint job is really bad. They should should have done a better paint job before they when they painted it. Um, so it does have treated siding on it. Um, their plan is to install a new product on it um, and use it as a test facility. So that is the proposed colors and design that they are proposing. Um, it is typically a vertical accent type material. It's similar to their diamond coat, if anybody's familiar with their diamond coat product, um, which is a horizontal installation. So they have a proposed horizontal installation on part of it. And then as you can see, about three quarters of the way back, then they transition to a vertical. Um, and then they also have um, some accents on the ends. They will um, clad the posts, um, replace the corners. Is there anything else? Paint the... Oh, they're going to paint the drip edge below the D, trim, D edge um, on the roof. And basically, um, you know, it's them out there in the public. So they're going to do whatever they can to do to make it nice. Um, and it's a project that they would like to do um, this fall yet. Is so. there a new door on there? I don't, I don't, <laughs> so the other the other one's still white because it is currently a white door. Yeah. Um, so are they replacing that? Are they painting it? Replacing it? Giving us a scratch? <laughs> they they said they would work with us because they wanted to to reflect the quality of this new product. That's how they. Left what are we doing that? <laughs> that leaves a lot. It's currently <laughs> storage for youth baseball. And um, the rain shelter. <laughs> that is the only rain shelter. Is there well, you have the dugouts. And so, <laughs> is there another building that is more prominently used that we could? There, well, it was partially ideal because it's so small and something they could do yet this fall. So they just want to use our building to try out the new product. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And they they want to partner on a property that they can access. So right now, their closest one is one's in Green Bay, one's in Eau Claire. They're both residential properties. They work with the homeowner. One of the properties got sold. But anytime they want to access it to look at how the product is performing or do any testing, they actually have to contact the homeowner. Where they stated they wouldn't contact us every time they were coming here, um, but they do have access to it 24-7 like anybody else. Um, and it's real-world testing versus their test chambers, which... It repeats the same test over and over, you know, in those test chambers. Where here, they can get baseballs hit against it. That's not going to happen in a test chamber, you know, or kids crying on it. So it's literally 15 year warranty on the product, five years on um, the labor. So. Um, okay, so two questions. Is that what it's actually going to look like when it's done? Are they are they testing colors? I mean, like, is every side of this building a different color? No, is, no, 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 no. Cool. Somebody's in charge of picking the colors, right? She's no, sitting right next to me. <laughs> and they they provided a series of colors they could do, but okay. we just thought this had a modern look. This like it. it's movable, so mm -hmm. if it's not necessary at Kennedy or something changes, we could put it on a different site and utilize it and. We felt like it it matched well to this building or other buildings. So mm -hmm. if it if it did have to leave the site, it would still. Okay. Yeah. Um, we we know they need storage for pickleball nuts too in the winter. He was talking to me today about that. <laughs> We're talking about you, buddy. That's okay. You know, I was I was looking at that, and I have modular building in here, so I thought maybe you want. <laughs> this is really cool. It's really nice. What's my yes, second I'm sorry. question no. is what happens when the product fails? It's Are warranty they... for 15 years. Well, I, I understand that's the selling point, but if it does fail, like I, I have a test product on my house too. No. So I'm well versed in this, you know, 15 years later, what happens when it's failing? Are they going to 
do something to update it or do we just get the leftovers of, I mean, it looks crappy to begin with. They're improving it for 15 years. <laughs> so <laughs> I mean, it, 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 is a brand, like, it is a brand new product. Do they have they, a they, plan on like, if this product really doesn't turn out well, we'll replace it with the siding that we already have that we know does look good. Yeah, we can ask that. We can make sure that before it happens that there's some sort of agreement that we have in writing that states that, yeah. During 15 years, did they give us a new chef? Yeah. Right. I'm just saying. You know, we did you the courtesy. Of letting you use your <laughs> Give us a chance. That's right. I like that. And we will. Um, they did ask we if we would help with the labor costs for installation, and we said we would up to two thousand dollars because this being a new product and the expense, whether we would have that expense or not, will depend on when the person comes to install it, how long it does take them to install it as a new product. Um, but all of the product otherwise would be gratis to the to the village. Well, I don't. I okay. I take real big exception to that. I don't think this should cost us anything if they want to install it on a building that is out in the public as a charitable thing. It makes them look good. But why do we have to help pay for the installation? They have lots of guys on their teams who can do the installation. And many contractors out there using it right now. That would right. I, I guess I thought no. that's what it was. Was a no. This is a demonstration, new or like this is how it's going to be applied. If their field guys don't know how to install this, why are we coming up with? Who on this team knows how to install this siding, and why are we? Why would this be our expense? Good point. Well, yeah, usually you can't warranty a product yet either if you have somebody else install it. I would assume it's their. It's not it's, it's installers that they have, but it's people that are under contract through their through um, their lumber companies that they are utilizing. But again, it, it's not to say that we would. They had just asked the question if we would cover up to a certain dollar amount. We didn't feel uncomfortable with that. We do have it within the budget. And then again, the, the shed gets updated for much less cost than it would have cost us to update it. Yeah, I get that, but I don't, I, it's a test product. And I, so if I were going to expend money on a project, I wouldn't be using a test product for the village. I mean, I would be using something that is tried and, and true. Yes, it would cost more, but I, I don't think we should be putting our money towards a test product that they're offering. Yeah, I mean, so I think, they, yeah, yeah. they came to That's us favorite. asking. Yeah, for a building, and now that is just awesome. Yeah, I mean, we <laughs> want to be a good community partner and stuff, but you know, like, they, the upside is much greater for them showing off their product. So I would, yeah, so the train I'll pay you. Yeah. But then back to that forced labor thing, just you know, <laughs> right there. I'm with Clark on that one. Yeah, and I would think that um, if this is a product that other that lumber yards or contractors are interested in using, they would have interest in being there and helping install it, it on their day off or whatever. I mean, that, that's up to them to to learn how to use these you know, these products. She's bringing up a great point because none of our people will be trained to even install this. So imagine our crew showing up there and we're doing nothing but the labor. We're not actually installing it because we're not trained. Right. So what what do they actually expect us to do? And and she's right because there's other contractors in the area. Why would you invite all these contractors there to show how this is put on? What a great opportunity! Yeah. Well, we wouldn't be there while during the install. I mean, what are we, we were talking about forced labor for the canoe the for the canoe and kayak launch. It, it would be so the two no, like, what's just the to the cost? It would be a, a cost share on uh, the project. I no way. Yeah, I Wait. yeah I, I think I got to go with on this. I think that just doing who would favor. Yeah, we we have a shed. They, they want to use their stuff on a shed that you know shine for. Yeah, that is like a pittance of what goes on in that company. I mean, the that is like I'm kind of insulted actually, and I I have deep ties to this company, <laughs> and I am really kind of insulted that they would do this because there are um millions of dollars and they are across the united states and that eight by 12 shed and they're asking us to put money towards this project no way 
no way. Nope. I so I say no. If they're if they can't cover it, no. We we should just politely do that. Yeah. 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 We're gonna pass. We've already accepted, but okay. <laughs> we, we can express have some conversations. We we can express the concern. I mean, we we did view it as a cool partnership and to preview the product. We did share like we we were on board to have it within the park. We were just reporting back because we were kind of excited about the option. We. <laughs> I was excited about it when they when it was brought up at the last meeting. I thought that was super great. They're doing something for the community, and then not so much. Well, that part of the conversation did go a little maybe okay. wampus because they are a ESOP now, so their approval process for completing projects like this is different, which is an employee-owned company. Um, so you have a board that votes on expending money for marketing, etc. So they shared that with us during that discussion, which for me and myself, I probably wouldn't have thought of that, even though I know somebody that works there has been there for almost 15 years too. Um, and she's very close to me. <laughs> um, who thinks about that stuff all the time. Absolutely. And if I told her that was taking place, she probably would have clobbered me um, too. Um, because, you know, they, they do look at that type Because it is employee. Which... Yeah. Open my eyes, it's perspective, a different one, you know, because, you know, most of the time they have those monies available and they probably still do. Um, it's just. And I, I agree with you. I guess when you were saying it's 2000, and I'm going, wait a minute, this was their experiment on our right. building. Are we past the point of politely declining? Yes. Yeah. Is. Oh, okay. 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 And I got cool. one, I got to ask Jane. Um, on the 28th of October, Clips meets that night. Yeah, yeah, we discussed that. We'll we'll have to make a plan. We might have to adjust Clips because we we moved Clips up because of the election. Right. So we'll we'll have to figure that piece out. Okay, I just I I put parks and I realized yep. I had Clips written on there too. So. Notes, notes. We have a motion to adjourn. Motion by Ermeline, second by Easter. All in favor say aye. Aye. Meeting has now been adjourned. Six for teaching.